Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at how we can send and receive match state messages across the network. So the reason we do this is that we want to be able to send messages to other players that are connected to say, hey, we did this particular action and we want to receive messages from those users as well so that we can update our local game instance. So in this instance, we're just going to create a brand new button here. Let's say a UI button. And let's just fire this below this one. And I'm just going to change the text of this to say ping. We're going to create a very simple ping pong message that we're going to send across the network. We're going to send a ping and the other connected players are going to send a pong. So let's come down into our code for the Nakama connection. And let's get started. So let's again, like we did before, let's create a function that can handle that button click. So let's say public async void, and we're just going to call it ping. Let's do a debug log. We're going to say pinging. And here, basically what we're going to do is we're going to send that message across the network. So let's say await socket dot send match state async. Now, this is going to want a few different things. It's going to want, first of all, it's going to want our match ID. It's also going to want a long, which is an op code. And it's also going to want a string state and any of the user presences we actually want to send this to. If we have a look, we can also send a byte array for the state rather than a string. But in this instance, we're not going to bother with any of those. So let's start by passing in the match ID. Now you can see that we actually don't currently have a value for the match ID stored anywhere. So let's quickly do that. We're going to create a private string called match ID. And just below where we actually connect to the match, let's store our match ID. So we're going to say match ID equals match dot ID. Okay, so let's come back up to our send match async here. We're going to pass in that match ID. Then we're going to send a op code. Now an op code is basically just a number that we can send across the network and each number will specifically relate to one particular kind of action. Now, in this instance, you can give it any number you want, but we're just going to go with the number one. And I'll explain that a little bit better once we get around to actually receiving a message from the network. So the next thing we want to do is pass in our state. Now, state could be any string that you want. You could use JSON to send some more structured data, or you could just send a string across the network. In this instance, we're not actually going to be interested in sending anything. So let's just say null here because we don't really have anything to send. We're just sending a ping across the network and our user presences. Again, we're just going to say null. This is optional. As you can see, it's already got a null value, but I'm just going to send that for clarity. OK, so you can see here that we actually get a ambiguous call because it doesn't know whether or not we want to use the string or the byte array version. So let's just send uh, an explicit empty string there. OK, so that's going to send a message across the network. What about receiving messages? So let's come back up to the start where we added our event handlers on the socket here. Let's add a new one. So socket received match state. We're going to add a handler for this. So let's say on received match state. And let's come down and add that handler here. So let's say private async void on received match state. And we want an I match state object. Let's call that match state. OK, and let's come down and see what we get inside our match state object. So if we say match state dot, you can see here that we get a reference to the match ID. We get the op code that was sent. In our case, it's just going to be one. And we get the state and the user presence. And the user presence there is the actual user that sent that message across the network. So this op code, let's come back to that. The op code could be used, for example, you could have number one means that the player is moving. Number two could be the player is attacking. Number three could be the player is jumping. So each op code relates to a very specific action. And you can define that however you want in your specific game. Now, one way I like to do that is having a enum. So you could come up to the top here. And we're not going to use it in this particular example, but you could, for example, have an enum here called opcodes. 
And you could define, for example, a um, let's just say you're sending a position across the network. Maybe you're sending an attack state across the network. And then you could use those opcodes in the send match async function. For now, because we're just using a simple ping pong messaging system, we're just going to keep it at one and two. So we've got one for the ping and two is going to be for the pong. So in here, we're going to say if match state dot opcode equals one, then what we're going to do is we're going to send a message straight back. So we're going to say await socket dot send match state async. And we're going to use our match ID. We're going to send the opcode to and we're not bothered about state. So let's send an empty string and let's send it straight back to the user that sent it. So let's say uh, we're going to say match state dot user presence. OK, so we're going to send a pong message back if we receive a one. And how about let's say if we receive a opcode two, then we're just going to send one of those pings back again. So let's copy this one here. Let's paste it and we're going to send a one back. And you can see we've actually got an error here. We were supposed to send this as an array. So let's send a new array here. Like so. OK, so that's sending and receiving the messages. So let's put some debug logs in here. So we're going to say, first of all, We've got this pinging, so we're going to say pinging when we send one out. And we're going to say pong when we send one of those out. So let's say debug.log. And we're going to say here we received ping. And then let's say debug.log. And we're going to say sending pong. So we received a ping, we're sending a pong. And in this one here, we're going to say debug.log received Pong. And let's log out here sending ping. Let's actually just copy the text here and we're going to change that one up as well just so that it's consistent. And the final thing we need to do then is we need to hook up the button. So let's come back into our canvas here. Let's add an on click handler. Let's drag in our Nakama connection and let's choose the ping function there. So let's save that. Let's go to build and run. OK, let's run that in the editor as well. We're going to go to find a match on both of these. OK, you can see we're now connected. Let's send a ping. And you can see here now that this is basically just being spammed with ping pong messages. So it's sending a ping, it's received a pong. It's sending another ping, it's received a pong. So you can see that that is working as we expect. This client here has sent out a ping. This client here has received it and is sending the pong message back. And this one is then just restarting the entire cycle. So we've got this sending and receiving of messages back and forth between the two clients. Now, if I close this client, you'll see this message stops. So let's go to clear. Let's close this client. And you can see here that this messaging indeed does stop. We're no longer receiving any messages. The last thing we did was we sent out a ping and we never received a pong back because that client has now disconnected from the match. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to look specifically at how we sent the player's position and input across the network in Fish Game. I'll see you there.